Matt Hudson went from living in a storage container to slowly dying on a hospital bed at the age of 40. He spent his last few years hooked on drugs. As he got closer to the end, the worst part was the terrible feeling that he was completely alone. January 2018, 40-year-old Matt Hudson lie in a Pasadena, California hospital close to death. The lifelong drug addict had been diagnosed with an incurable disease. I was really afraid to die at this point. I was really afraid to die. What frightened the self-proclaimed atheist even more was the feeling of being separated from God. And I felt this extreme separation and this extreme loneliness, you know? Matt was in high school when he turned from God and church. Although he grew up in a loving Christian home, he identified more with the secular, atheistic ideas of a popular radio host. I listened to him every day. That was really the voice in my head. And he would talk about his insecurities and stuff, you know? So we lined up a lot. His childhood was a lot like mine. And, uh, you know, then you get into the whole thing, he's in, he doesn't believe in God and stuff like that. Having left his faith behind, Matt filled the emptiness with drinking and drugs. He tried college, but when that didn't pan out, he went to work for the family business. For years, despite his growing addiction, Matt managed to function at work and in life. However, after a decade and a half, the drugs had taken over. That left his brother, who now ran the company, with no choice but to let Matt go. It was so embarrassing and stuff, and I wanted my job back and stuff, and uh, I was really angry at my brother. Despite the heartache and troubles Matt caused, his family never stopped praying for him, especially his sister, Sarah. I had to keep believing that God would turn his life around. And I just kept saying, you know, I know who Matt is. I experienced that growing up as a child, and we can't give up on him. After getting fired, Matt moved into a sparsely furnished storage container on his parents' property. He called his new home the bin. You just keep using, and you just stuff it down, stuff it down, stuff it down. But there was so much shame. I was afraid of, of where I would go if I died, but I still couldn't quit. Then, in December 2017, Matt, almost 40, had gone back to the Ben after spending time with his family for Christmas. He began to see how he had wasted his life. I would have these massive panic attacks, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with my life? How am I ever going to stop? I got on my knees and I cried out to God, and I said, God, I, I give you my life. I'm so sorry I messed everything up. But Matt still couldn't stop using. Then two weeks later, he started feeling ill. He developed a rash on his arms and legs, and breathing became difficult. He went to the ER and was admitted to the hospital, where he continued to decline. Doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. When Matt's dad came to visit, he was told his son was dying. And I could see the fear on his face, you know, and, uh, and uh, he just hugged me, and I cried to him. I said, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for messing everything up. Matt soon developed pneumonia, and doctors decided to put him into a coma and on a ventilator. As the family continued to pray, Sarah held on to a word she says came from God. God is going to rise him up, and he's going to go and share his testimony, and he's going to go share the, the word of God to everybody. Finally, doctors had a diagnosis, dermatomyositis, an autoimmune disease that, while not curable, is treatable with blood infusions and medication. When they brought Matt out of sedation, he carried with him a memory he says drove him into the arms of God. I experienced this blackness. I experienced this, uh, uh, you know, like my own person. It's hard to explain. It's hard to put it into words, you know? And I felt this extreme separation and this extreme loneliness, you know? And again, I didn't understand that I was being separated from God and being separated from that. But now I look back and I can tell it was just this extreme separation and it was scary. After two months in the hospital, Matt was released and moved in with his brother's family. Now rebuilding his life, got off drugs, found forgiveness with his family, and began discovering God's love for him. I spent 
you know, six months crying, every, just these big soul healing tears, crying and everything. And because uh, I just realized how much the Father loved me, I realized that even in all my addictions and all that time, He was with me the whole time. Then four years later, in June of 2022, Matt says God answered their prayers again. Still on medication and receiving infusions, he went to his doctor for a recurring appointment and blood work. Wow, I go, what doctor? He goes, all your levels are normal. I said, whoa, and he said, wow, this never happens. And I said, doctor, is this a miracle? And he said, this never happens. And he said, you're doing construction? I said, yeah, I'm working two, three days a week and stuff. And he just couldn't believe it. And uh, he took me off my infusions there, started to weed me off the medication. And he was right, I wasn't like I was before. I'm actually better than I was before. Today, Matt is still in good health. He's also attending Bible school at Bethel in Redding, California, preparing for the ministry, just as Sarah predicted. You know, when God does these things in your life, in my life, it was so amazing. But to be used to, to, to pour in other people and see them, uh, you know, like the Jesus light bulb go off and people to see them. I can see when they get, when they, when they start to receive the Father's love and He starts to pull that out of them. And I really have hope. I know what it's like to have God change your mind about everything, about everything, you know? God is so good and so awesome. Matt looked like an absolutely hopeless case. I mean, he was living in a storage bin. He was at rock bottom. But I love the fact that his family, his sister in particular, did not stop praying for him, did not give up on him. Isn't that just like God? The Bible says that God is patient. He is long suffering, not willing that any perish, but that all come unto repentance. That's because of his great love. And you could just see the love of Jesus in Matt today. What a wonderful testimony. And I just feel in my heart that there are many of you watching you have been praying for your unsaved loved ones. Maybe those who have grown up in church, you know, you've taught them the ways of the Lord and they've gone away, they've become prodigals. I want you to know that the Lord is telling you today, don't stop praying. Don't give up on your loved ones. Continue to stand in the gap. And that's what Andrew and I are going to do today. We're going to stand in the gap. We're going to believe that the same God who reached way down into that horrible mess of drug addiction and everything that Matt was going through, that he can do the same for you and your loved ones today. We want to encourage you. Let's pray together in the name of Jesus. Let's join Andrew and I. Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies, oh God. You are so faithful and you are long-suffering. You're not willing that anyone perishes, but that all come unto repentance. And we pray for those today who are believing you for their loved ones to come into the kingdom. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would work miracles in their hearts, that you would soften their hearts, that you would remove the addictions and the things that have ensnared them, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would even place people, Lord, witnesses in their paths to share the love of Christ with them. We ask you to turn lives around, Lord Jesus, just like you've turned our lives around. Would you do the same for them, Father God, because we know that's according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna pray for those right now who are bound to addiction, but what's scaring you more than being free from the drug or alcohol is the next step. Dealing with the shame, how do you how do you start again? How do you start over? How do you begin to resurface and talk to people? You're afraid of that. And Lord, right now I pray for those who are bound to addiction, alcohol, drugs, that those chains are broken and released now. They're literally dropping off arms and legs. And now, Jesus, let them feel hope. You desire fellowship intimate relationship, friendship with these who have been bound. You want to be their savior. You're calling them home. You don't want separation from them. I pray, Lord God, that they'll take your hand now and walk with you. You're faithful on this journey. In Jesus' name, there's great hope. Amen. And those who feel that I have been this way for so long, it just seems like it's impossible. But God is saying with him, nothing is impossible. 
Call on the name of Jesus. He has the power to set you free. He has the power to turn your life totally and completely around. Nothing is impossible with him. And those of you who are struggling, God says he is making a way for you to be free yes. right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, we want to leave you today with these words from Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that's the key, let your requests be made known to God. God bless you.